So in this video, we're going to look at chapter six, work power, energy and momentum. And this is my third attempt to record this video. And there are seagulls killing each other outside and I cannot get rid of them. So let's just try and do it anyway. The definition of work. So obviously get this into your copies. What is work? It's force by distance. So we're going to need to look at force now as well. And if the force is constant, then the work done by the force is the product of the component of the force in the direction of motion and the direction through which the point of application moves. Work is a scalar quantity measured in joules and a joule is a newton meter. The work done when a force of one newton applied over a distance of one meter. And jot this into your copies too. One kilojoule, a thousand joules, it obviously is one kilojoule. A very exa simple example just to get us into this question. Work is equal to force by distance, so we have to be given two of the variables. We're given the force here of 100 newtons, doesn't really matter what's going on. We're given the distance here of 20 meters. So to get the work, it's just 100 by 20, which is 2,000 joules. So what if this rope made an angle A with the ground, where tan A is 3 over 4? And you guys know, if you given tan, We want to get sine and cos that are given to you here, but let's just refresh ourselves. This is your first class back after the summer. Tan A is opposite over adjacent, which makes the hypotenuse five. So that's where cos A is A over H. So cos A is your four over five. And sine A, which is O over H, is your three over five. So why is this important? Well, because now the rope, which has this force of 100, is being taken at an angle. So if we want to get our horizontal, which is X, we could also get our Y if we wanted, but we want to get our horizontal, which is X, and the angle is A. You can see we have A and H. We're going to use cos. We can say the cos of A is equal to X over 100. So 100 cos A is equal to what's going on in the X direction. And from above, the cos of A is 4 over 5 and 4 fifths of 100 is equal to 80. And this will be a force of 80 newtons. And the question asks, what is the work being done? So back to our original formula, the work here is equal to the force of 80 by the distance, which hasn't changed, it's still 20. So the work being done here is 1600 joules. Now let's look at power. Now, if any of you watch cycling, you know that these guys that cycle up these mountains have serious power in their legs. I could probably cycle up the same mountain, but it might take me a week, whereas those guys can go up in an hour. So the same example here in the book, someone carrying a quarter a ton of coal up a hill. They can obviously do it one piece at a time. It'll take them ages. But some Herculean powerful man or woman could take that coal up in one go. And the difference is obviously the power output. You may hear of wattage and stuff like that if you're watching the Tour de France. So everything is about power output and wattage. The next example in the book focuses on a woman dragging a stone over a rough horizontal ground by means of a horizontal rope. So we're given here distance, 100 meters. And in this question, we're given seconds because like the last example, it's the time taken to do things is what determines power. So we're told the force is 300 newtons Work, force by distance, you're 300 by your 100, which is your 30,000 joules. Really straightforward stuff. Now, to convert these joules, the work done into the power output is based on time. So this 30,000 divided by the time taken. 30,000 divided by 20. Your force by distance divided by your time is going to give you joules per second, which we would normally write as watts. So 30,000 divided by 20 gives you this 1500 watts. Another way of looking at power, an example given in the book is a car. Here's my car driving along in this direction and its speed is V and it moves with a constant tractive effort T, which is this force that we had before. We had force by distance over time so if we look at the power here power is equal to 
case of the car. The force, which is T, the tractive effort, by S over T. And the relationship between, between speed and time comes from our DST triangle. Distance is equal to speed by time. So speed divided by time. Distance over time. So this distance here is a D, and we have an S now in applied math. So just be careful with your confusion levels here. So this distance divided by time, we bring T over. Distance divided by time is equal to speed. And we were given the speed here initially as V. So the power in this case is equal to the tractive effort by the speed that the car is going at. Now, if we think of me going up this mountain and back down, well, maybe I wouldn't go down, it's too steep, but as I'm getting closer to the top, my power output is going down and down and down. So what's happening? The amount of work I'm doing by the amount of time it's taking is changing. And what do we call that in maths? We call the rate of change, calculus. So let's try and apply some calculus to this. So we say that this power that I have here, my power is changing depending on the work doing and depending on the time that I'm taking. And what is work? Work is this tractive effort by the distance that I covered. So I can change my W, my work into T times S. So the change of T times S over the changing time. If I jump the T back out here, because this constant tractive effort is a con or the constant tractive effort is a constant in this case. We can say the tractive effort times the change in distance over the change in time, not distance, time. And we saw from above that distance, this S over time, just D over T here, is equal to speed. So the tractive effort by the speed is what my power becomes as I get closer and closer to the top and feel like having a heart attack. So it just shows in a different format how we get this formula that we're going to use going forward. Any constant tractive effort we know as T. So any object moving forward, it could be a bike going up a hill, it could be a car driving along a road or a truck. Uh, this formula P is equal to the constant tractive effort times V, the speed that you're going at, is in the formula booklet. And here it is, work and power over on Kumat, and written in different formats and they do use F in the formula booklet, I think it's on page 55 and has this famous formula E equals MC squared on the same page, the mass energy equivalence. So moving on, in the next video we'll look at some examples and then we'll go and look at the questions in the start of chapter 6.